Lunch and main dining meals were honestly a step below hospital cafeteria food. Ugh, not good. It is Sunday, September 22nd, 2024, and on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, we're talking about Royal Caribbean's worst rated cruise ship and a bunch of other things. Welcome back here on this beautiful sunny Sunday in Hamburg, Germany. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I've been making travel videos for over 15 years of popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it was like to be there. I also wrote a little book called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship with crazy travel stories of things that have actually happened to me around the world. It's available on Amazon now if you wanna give me a little extra support. Speaking of, let me say a special hello to my newest channel member, Leanne Burnett Moore, and my newest Patreon member, Buddy MXZ. Thanks to both of you and everybody for all the extra support. During the week, I post travel vlogs where I show you that I'm out and about doing something around the world. A lot of times it's a cruise ship. And every Sunday I come to you from this red sofa right here. And in fact, I now have made almost 350 episodes of Sunday Sofa Time. How did that happen? Where did the time go? And why haven't we replaced this uncomfortable old sofa? I don't have the answers to all of those questions, but there are other answers I do have today, and a lot of them have to do with Royal Caribbean. So like I said, as somebody who creates two videos, at least two videos every week, the travel vlogs kind of take care of themselves because that has to do with where I was and what I was doing. But Sunday Sofa Time kind of gets challenging sometimes because inevitably, I'm either gonna be repeating myself or be repeating what another creator has possibly also just talked about. There are so many great creators out there right now who cover kind of the same things that that I talk about and a lot of times when I'm thinking about what I want to discuss in Sunday Sofa Time I look at the internet and think dang it Tony just talked about that dang it that's what Emma's video is about this week and we creators get more and more tools from YouTube to help run our channel and get to know our audiences. And one of the tools that they let us use is the inspiration tab. That's where I'm gonna take you now and then we're gonna talk about the things that it's suggesting my audience is interested in. My audience being all you fabulous people out there right now. So you see, if I log here into my YouTube creator account, it gives me all these options. I can find out about so many different things and over different dates, there's a lot of variables I can choose. And up here, it also says inspiration. There it will show me what my audience is watching from other creators and also give me suggestions on what they think could be created that would interest more people to watch. There's 12 suggestions here. We're gonna go through most of them and I'll tell you sort of my thoughts on these and uh, why I did or did not or will or will not make a video about those, starting with the Royal Caribbean Holiday Cruise. This is tricky because I'm wondering, do they mean holiday as in like Christmas or do they mean holiday as in like the European word for vacation? Either way, I do have a lot of experience with Royal Caribbean, two of the, I think, yeah, my two most recent cruises were with Royal Caribbean. Just a couple weeks ago, I disembarked the Utopia of the Seas. We had a fantastic cruise from Port Canaveral to Nassau and Coco Cay. Those are still the travel vlogs that are going online every week for the next couple of weeks. So make sure you're subscribed and check back if you want to see those. And in April of this year, I cruised around the Hawaiian Islands with the brilliance of the seas. And that was also fantastic. If you haven't seen the cabin tour of the Utopia yet, or The Brilliance of the Seas, take a look in my library and compare the two. The Brilliance is a much older ship, but the cabins were so much better. And speaking of Utopia of the Seas, the next suggestion here from YouTube is Utopia of the Seas Family Review. I did do a review of our experience on the Utopia from my perspective, but I'm somebody who does not travel with a family. And when I hear family, I think, okay, that means an older generation and younger people. And usually younger people need a lot of activity and action and the Utopia is definitely a good ship for that. They have a great selection of water slides, a flow rider surf simulator, so many fantastic activities and the shows, people, the shows on the Utopia were amazing. Very high energy, no 
story you had to follow, just sort of loud and fun and entertaining. So I think the Utopia of the Seas is a great ship for families. Next one is luxury travel on a budget, tips and tricks. And I am definitely somebody to talk to about that because my budget is very small. I pay for all the trips that you see here on the very unofficial travel guides. And of course, thanks again to everybody who watches the videos, who presses thumbs up, and especially to the people who have bought my book and support me in the other ways like channel membership and Patreon. But I'm always looking for ways to sort of squeeze more out of my budget. And the one cruise related thing that popped up in my head right away when I read this about looking for luxury on a budget is, if you want to experience sort of a high class, sweet level experience and you don't have the money that it takes to do it on Royal Caribbean or NCL, take a look at the MSC Yacht Club. As far as I know, that is the least expensive sweet level offered on, let's say, major popular cruise lines. We tried it once on a Mediterranean cruise and for the price, it was really fantastic. I just remembered there was a funny story that I know I also did in a sofa time talking about how there was something missing in my food and I asked Marcus to get the waiter, but Marcus waved to the maitre d', you know, like the guy at the front of the restaurant in a white tuxedo with a bow tie, and he made such a big deal out of my missing chips or whatever. It was actually kind of embarrassing, but if you want to cruise in the suites, sometimes you gotta be ready for that level of service. The next thing on the list here is the ultimate world cruise from Royal Caribbean, and I'm just gonna be honest and say, is that a thing? If it's a thing, I haven't heard about it. Or if I've heard about it, I don't remember it right now. Next one up is another one from Royal Caribbean. It says Jewel of the Seas Royal Caribbean Cabins. And I haven't cruised with the Jewel, but I have cruised with the Legend of the Seas, which is no longer sailing for Royal Caribbean. And also with the Monarch of the Seas, which definitely is not sailing anymore. As well as the Brilliance of the Seas, the Utopia, the Anthem, the Navigator, the Mariner. I guess what I'm trying to say is there are a lot of Royal Caribbean cabin tours on my channel not specifically from the Jewel, but one thing I've also talked about after my most recent cruises on the newer Royal Caribbean ships is it seems like Royal Caribbean is trying to kind of clone a lot of things across their fleet, which has advantages and disadvantages, of course, that keeps the quality high because if it's working well and has high uh, approval rates or whatever with guests on one ship, then technically it should work well on other ships. But I feel like in a way it takes away the excitement of cruising with a new ship because there's less new things to discover within the one cruise line. How do you all feel about this? If you're somebody who's always cruising from Southern Florida, there are a lot of options, but there's only so many that do something new. And if you're just always cruising with a Royal Caribbean ship, in a way, you're gonna end up missing out on interesting things that are on other cruise lines too. Especially if Royal Caribbean just keeps making clones of the ships they already have. That's what I mean. Let me know how you see it. Okay, now we're gonna take a little deeper dive into one of these subjects and that is, what is the worst Royal Caribbean cruise ship? Whether or not something is good or bad, of course, is always subjective. There are things that some people like on one ship that other people don't like. Some people love the mega ships. Some people say they will never cruise with a mega ship. It's kind of different for everybody. So what I did to find out what the worst Royal Caribbean ship is, is I looked at the reviews at cruisecritic.com. If you are into cruising, if you've done more than one cruise or one cruise at all, I'm sure you have heard Heard of Cruise Critic and they give cruisers the opportunity to leave reviews for individual ships and I went there I looked up the Royal Caribbean fleet and I scrolled all the way down to find which ship was the worst rated on Cruise Critic from Royal Caribbean and I was totally surprised to find out which ship it is it's the quantum of the seas this is hard for me to believe. This class of ships has the iFly skydiving simulator, which is one of my favorite things that I've ever done on any cruise ship. There's also the observation platform. They have bumper cars, so many fun things to do. Perhaps one of the reasons that 
this ship that has poor reviews is just because, I don't know how else to say this, but maybe the wrong people are cruising with the Anthem. You might be disappointed on your first cruise if you end up cruising with a ship that doesn't fit to the style of vacation that you like to take. And maybe for some reason, a lot of people in that category end up on the Anthem. I don't know, but from reading through the reviews, it seems like a lot of people recently were complaining about the food. I'll read a few of them to you. This person gave the dining one star. That's harsh. They wrote dining good if at paid restaurants, poor dining if at no charge. The dining room food was awful. Sorrento's pizza is on par with grocery store frozen and it was too crowded even without kids. Long lines at the buffet and poor layout and we were asked to leave the buffet before we finished because the crowd needed more seating. Okay, interesting. I don't remember the buffet having a strange layout, but I have been on cruises where they've made an announcement saying that because the buffet is like very popular at the moment that if you're done eating, please leave your table so that other people who would like to eat can have a place to sit down. And I don't think they're trying to make anybody hurry up and finish their meal quickly, but there are people who sometimes after their meal sit in the buffet and read a book and you can kind of read a book any place on the ship, but the people who want to eat in the buffet can only sit down at those tables. You know what I mean? So they sometimes do make announcements. I have witnessed that before. And the Sorrento's pizza that I had on my last two cruises was not like grocery store frozen pizza. Although, let's be real, there is some pretty good grocery store frozen pizza, isn't there? Let me know in the comments where you're from, like what country and what your go-to frozen pizza brand is. Marcus and I make a lot of our own pizzas here where we buy like a ready-made crust, but then we make our own sauce and put the, our own toppings on it. We very rarely actually buy frozen pizza, but if we do, I guess Dr. Utker. In fact, let me just take a look here. Yep. There you go. There's another review here where it mentions the food. They say, this is my 11th cruise. And unfortunately, even though we did have an amazing vacation, there were a couple of negatives. First off, the food throughout the entire cruise was terrible. I mean, really bad. I talked to so many people during the trip that all said the same thing. The breakfast was okay, but it was the exact same thing every day. Lunch and main dining meals were honestly a step below hospital cafeteria food. Ugh, not good. Literally all four of us hardly ate any of the meals in the main dining room. I really hate to be negative, but it really was the worst food I have ever had on any cruise I've ever been on. We went on Oasis last year and it was a night and day difference. Even Sorrento's, which we loved on Oasis, Oasis was usually undercooked and void of flavor. Yeah, I wonder what's going on there. That's so not typical for Royal Caribbean. I have to tell you the truth. Even after reading these reviews, I still would cruise on the Anthem again. And sometime within the next week, I am going to be booking my next cruise. I will let you know right now. It won't be the Anthem of the Seas. If you want to know what it is, just make sure you check back soon. Of course, I will let you know. There are some other interesting things to talk about here. I'm going to skip around a little bit. The next one in the row is a Celebrity of the Seas cruise ship. Celebrity of the Seas? Huh? Did I miss something? I think somebody's confused here because there is a cruise line called Celebrity Cruises and then there's Royal Caribbean and all of Royal Caribbean ships are called the something of the seas and celebrity ships are called like the Celebrity Constellation or the Celebrity Apex. So I think somebody has mixed two things up here. Well, YouTube has definitely mixed it up. Should I do a video called the Celebrity of the Seas Cruise Ship? Thanks for that suggestion, YouTube. Okay, the final one here is another one that I did a little bit of research for. It's the cheapest Royal Caribbean cruise. So what I did is I went to the Royal Caribbean website and I searched for cruises and I just, I didn't put in like any specifications, I just said search. And there's two ways you can look at this because the least expensive cruise, like the one that bottom line costs the least amount of money was this one. It's on the Serenade of the Seas. It's $184 per person or starts at $184 per person. But here's the thing, it's just one night. It's a one night cruise. So $184 for one night of cruising, of course, it's just $184, but if you compare that to 
the price of other cruises per night? It's actually not that cheap, and I'm gonna show you what I mean. I looked for the least expensive cruise that was like a couple nights, and I actually found a really amazing deal. If anybody can be spontaneous, this cruise leaves October 6th, so it's coming up really soon. It's a seven night Southern Caribbean cruise starting and ending in San Juan and going to some amazing places where it's still gonna be nice and warm right now, and that's starting at $4.99 per person, so $4.99 for a seven night cruise, if you divide that into nights, that's obviously way less expensive than the other cruise, which is just one night. So depending on how you look at it, I wanna say that this seven night Southern Caribbean cruise from San Juan on the Rhapsody of the Seas, that is at the moment, the least expensive Royal Caribbean cruise. If you stuck around to the end, the secret word is helicopter. I don't know if you've been able to hear the helicopters, but Marcus and I live right next to the lake in the middle of the city, and there's been two helicopters circling around, which usually only means one of two things. Either there's some kind of race happening on the lake, or somebody has gone for a very long swim. Let's hope it's a race, shall we? Anyways, if you've watched till now, please include the word helicopter in your comments so I know you made it till the end. There are more travel vlogs from the Utopia of the Seas coming up on the very unofficial travel guide, so I hope you check back here soon. See you then.